In this video, I'm going to use an Arduino to read and write data to an external EEPROM chip. And EEPROM stands for Electrically Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. And this is a type of non-volatile memory. So what that means is that it will retain data even after you uh, power cycle the chip. You can uh, remove power from the chip, and when you turn the power back on, the data is still going to be there. And the Atmega328 chip found on the Arduino Uno actually has uh, one kilobyte of internal EEPROM, uh, but EEPROM has a limited number of writes, and it's uh, you can get larger storage on external chips, so that might be some reasons to use uh, an external EEPROM. And so you could use it to store maybe uh, configuration data or statistical data for sensor measurements and things like that. Okay, so the chip I'm going to use is called the 24LC512 EEPROM chip. And um, this model stores 64 kilobytes of data, and each byte is individually readable and writable. So the word size is basically just one byte. Um, the, the, according to the data sheet, there's a limited number of writes you can make to each address, and it's one million. Um, and so this is going to be the pin layout. You can see the little dimple here at the top. So this is pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And um, pins uh, one, two, and three are address pins. This is an I2C uh, serial protocol chip. So you can set uh, each um, I2C address for each chip. Uh, if, if all three of these go to ground, the, uh, the address is going to be 50 hex. But since there's, so since there's three lines, you can, you can adjust these and actually get eight different addresses. So you can get uh, uh, two to the third power, so that's eight. And so you could have eight chips um, on the same I2C bus. Uh, addressable by the Arduino. Uh, so pin number four is just the ground pin. And then pin number five is the I squared C data pin. So that's going to go to the Arduino uh, A4 uh, analog four pin. Uh, pin six is the I squared C clock pin. And that's going to go to the Arduino analog A5 pin. Uh, pin seven is the write protect. So you can you could write to this chip and if you didn't want to, if you wanted to make sure the contents uh, don't get overwritten, you would set pin seven to high, and that means you cannot write to this chip anymore. Uh, and you could write to it again if you make that pin low, but if that pin is high, it's write protected. So I have it low since we're going to write to it. And then, uh, of course, pin eight is the VCC pin, and this runs on uh, five volts. So you just set that to the five volt power rail. Uh, you'd be powered by the Arduino. Okay, so this is the Arduino sketch that I'm going to use. And um, so first off, I'm going to include the wire.h library, and that's to allow uh, you to use the I squared C protocol. Then I'm going to define the, the EEPROM uh, I squared C address. And recall, since I have all three address pins set to zero, that's going to make the address 50 hex. And you can get that from the data sheet. Um, okay, so then in the setup, I'm gonna just going to do uh, wire begin. So that kind of um, initializes the, the I squared C buses. And then I'm going to do serial begin because I'm going to write uh, some of this information to the serial monitor just to verify that it's working. So what the sketch is going to do, it's going to just, at address zero, it's going to write a value, a byte value. So I'm, I'm setting these variables here. Uh, setting the address to zero, the byte value to 110, just pick randomly. Then I'm going to call of a method called write address, and I'm going to pass it that address and the value. And then I'm going to call read address and pass it the address, and that's going to return the byte value back from that address. And then I'm going to print it out just to show that it really did write and read uh, to that address. Um, so this is all done in the setup, um, just a one-time thing, so there's nothing going on in the loop. So, yeah, and the write address, uh, again, passes in the address and the value. Uh, this is the, in I squared C, that's how you, um, begin a write, or begin a write transmission. And then, um, 
for this chip. The the address is uh, two bytes long, so there's a most significant byte and a least significant byte. Um, so you have to do actually do two writes. Okay, so I'm writing to address zero, so this address both of these both of these writes are going to be zero, and then I'm going to write in the value and then do in transmission, and then I'm going to have to do this delay five milliseconds because if you look at the data sheet, there's a it takes a, a maximum of five milliseconds to write a value. So if you don't have this in here, I notice, and you try to read, you're not going to get the value back. So you have to wait five milliseconds after you do it right. If you're if you're doing like I did, if you're reading right after you do it right, you're going to have to put that delay in there. Okay, so then read address, pass it the address. Um, Again, you do begin transmission, and you have to write the address you're going to read from. So this this little section of code is similar to the write function, although you're not going to actually write anything to it. But you do have to set the address pointer in the same way. And then you do end transmission. So then you do wire request from. You pass it that square c address and how many bytes you want to read. So I'm reading one byte. So I do wire dot read that returns our data. So I return that back and then print that out. So if I let's say plug from the Arduino in, which we're pointing to, yeah. I'll upload the sketch. Okay, and then we'll look at serial monitor. Okay, so you can see. The return value is 110. Of course, that's what uh, we expected. So this is where that's printing that out. So after it does the read and the write, just to verify that it works. So anyway, that's basically how you would use an external EEPROM chip. Um, there's a lot of lot of a lot of storage space there. They're not really meant to be written to a lot. Although data sheet says one million writes, but you should keep that in mind. So. I don't know. You could maybe have some kind of algorithm in there if you're, you know, if you're storing data. Maybe switch these addresses, kind of rotate them up so it doesn't always write to the same address every time and wear it out. I don't know if that's really necessary or not. Also, the data sheet says the values um, are are good for like 40 years. So if you write to that chip once, supposedly they'll still be there 40 years from now. Uh, so, well, there it is. Hope you enjoyed the video.